Who's Clint Jackson? Well, I'd never heard of the guy either. Until one of our listeners said, hey, Kimberly and Beck, you got to look up this guy. He's worse than Pignato ever thought about being. And he apparently is back to doing his, you know, similar uh, weird ways. Fourth man bringing it today, aren't they? So, Starting the week off strong with this story. This guy is uh, a guy by the name of Clint Jackson. He's a former Rochester City police officer. He was convicted going years back of sexually abusing eight women while he was on per, per, uh, patrol duty. He would stop good-looking women, he would frisk them, and then he would squeeze their boob, and he would, you know, put his hand up between their legs, and he would give a squeeze. Fondle them. That kind of thing. So this goes back to January of 2002? He was convicted of 15 counts of sexual abuse of eight women. He was acquitted wow. on another 16 counts. Uh, at the time, Clint Jackson was 24 years old. And he'd been working as a, a, a city cop when all this went down. Mm -hmm. And I think he served a two-year sentence for his crimes of fondling the women that he would stop. All right. So that's one Clint Jackson. So you say, okay, how does this play into now? Do we have that guy on the phone? No, we don't. No. I can call him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah, the listener. Because what what's being alleged currently? That he's working at a strip club and he's yeah. harassing the women there? That's the Allegedly. Word. Yeah. That he's working at not one but two area strip clubs. And the dancers are complaining about this guy's behavior. But what do you expect when you hire this guy? Well, my bet is they probably didn't know his history. But yeah, 13 counts, uh, actually 15 counts of sexual abuse. 15 counts of third degree sexual abuse. Was described by the chief at the time as inappropriately touching a female's in conjunction with his duties as an officer. Mm -hmm. uh, chief Duffy was the, uh, the chief the of police time. at the time. And uh, Duffy called the acts outrageous. And says he was concerned about other possible victims coming forward. And I think there were other victims, and he was acquitted of those charges. This Clint Jackson. We'll reach out to the fourth man now. Chris is trying to reach them. At 222-2899. No luck so far. But there's more about this Clint Jackson. As we like to say, or at least I do, people don't change. They just find a different way to be themselves. Oh, here's a picture of him. Yeah. And it looks like, allegedly, according to some people, he's up to his old old ways. So I'll tell you what, we'll take a break and hopefully talk with the person who sent us this message. So, Man. he not only works at Tally Ho, but also the Mirage right. on Westridge Road. Mm -hmm. Dozens of serious complaints to management about him sexually harassing the dancers. Well, that's his M.O. That's what he does. Right. I mean... He was doing that as a police officer. What, what do you think what? he's going to do at a strip club? He thinks that's free pickings, yeah, right? Yeah, it's low-hanging fruit. Why do you think he's going to change? He gives them a hard time after being rejected to give them rides home. So when, they're, when they don't agree to go with him in the car, then he, you know, is, is rude and abusive to them. So what, he says, hey, I'll give you a ride home, but for a ride home, you're going to do this to me? Probably. All right. Hi, you're on the radio with us, Kimberly and Beck. What can you tell us about the story? I can tell you I broke the story. This is Davey. Davey hey, B. Davey. What's going on? How you doing? Um, you know, it's, it's a typical, it's a disturbing story on, on, on several levels, but even though it's been uh, 11, 12 years since it's been an RPD officer, it just shows the, um, it shows how some individuals can kind of weave their way back into society and continue to, uh, despite, you know, having, you know, he did do his time and he did pay for his, for his, uh, mm -hmm. for the crimes, but it just shows the, the uh, mindset of some individuals who, uh, regardless whether they're sexual offenders or whatever, I mean, they'll, they'll find a way to continue to prey on, uh, on in this case, on, on females. So so basically I had a, a, a good tip from a good friend of mine that has followed my work in the community for probably about seven, eight years, and she's a professional dancer at one of these establishments, and basically she, uh, you know, she put this out there, and, uh, and I'm just... Uh, trying to create some awareness i think uh so did he I, Davey, let me ask you did one yeah. of the women say that he had gone through her purse and found weed in the purse and he said if you don't 
um, give me a Lewinsky, for lack of a, a better term. If you don't give me a Lewinsky, I won't tell the uh, the management here at whatever strip club that I found weed in your purse. Absolutely, that's just one of the uh, that's just one of the incidents. There's been many, and overall, the guy just seems he seems like a pervert. He just seems like a creep that obviously you know thinks that. Uh, and, and the one thing I want to add here, listen, I, I don't frequent strip clubs. Those that know me personally, I, I basically have next to no social life. I don't. I hardly drink. I really don't go out. I'm not a club person, never was. But but I want to make something clear because I know there'll be listeners, okay, and just people in general reading my blog and listening to this now who will be like, oh, whatever they're asking for, it, they're strippers. People have the misconception and, and really got it twisted when it comes to uh, 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 female dancers, exotic dancers. A lot of these women are in relationships, including the one that contacted me, serious relationships. A lot of them have families. Doesn't mean because they're, they're dancing uh, on a pole. Uh, you know, that they should be, you know, uh, subjected to this kind of uh, treatment, especially by an employee. So this is really disturbing, and it should be disturbing, especially to all the patrons of these clubs that they know. that That's my thing. My thing is about exposing a lot of the stuff that goes on, and mm -hmm. most people just turn a blind eye to it, or they simply don't know about it. Right, Maybe sure. let me jump in. So has this person who's been abused by this guy gone to management and say, hey, he's a scumbag, yeah. here's what he's doing to me, or did she Absolutely. just reach out to you? And the management is basically refusing to do anything about it, which and is basically enabling it. They're enabling uh, uh, an individual who, who I feel, you know, I don't know him personally, has some issues. Obviously, he's a convicted felon, and uh, and, and he's managed to, uh, ironically, he's managed uh, to weave his way back into society in a job that he's around women. And I find that really interesting, and I think, you know, people should find it disturbing. And he went, and he went to jail for two years, so he went to prison for sexually abusing women. <laughs> Yes, he did. Then in many he pulled cases, over while he was a, this, a, an I'm RPD. Sorry, yeah, he he was pulled over while working as a RPD back in the day. I mean, uh, honestly, the guy makes Pignato look good. I yeah, mean, I mean, if you can there. even possibly <laughs> do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's definitely up there with Pignato. I don't want to say who, which one is worse, but the uh, the thing is that the the RPD when, when it comes to extensive searches of a female suspect or just anyone in, or anyone to them sometimes is a suspect, but. Uh, you're supposed, they're supposed, the protocol and the policy is they're supposed to call a female officer. And at the very least, uh, any females listening now, they should request, uh, if they're ever searched, God forbid, or in a predicament with the RPD or any, any law enforcement, they should call a female officer to search them. And so, uh, Clint Jackson, uh, uh, basically got over on that. He would, he would not call female officers. He would do the searches himself. Of course he would. And his searches were a little bit more than extensive, if you know what I mean. Sure, exactly. And mm -hmm. so now he's working for two strip clubs, and he's bouncing back and forth as kind of the DJ and bouncer at Rick's Tally Ho and at the, the Mirage, Mirage, where and he's harassing and, and, and inappropriately touching the strippers. And by the way, right. just because they're strippers doesn't mean yeah. that you get... Uh, a free touch. No, it doesn't mean that, hey, if, uh, you can harass me free at whatever you want on the job. That doesn't come with the territory. And, and so Absolutely. You're, you're telling us the owners of Rick Tally Ho and the Mirage aren't doing anything about the guy, even though there have been numerous no, complaints. They, no, they know about his conduct. They, they've, uh, they've warned him, according to this, uh, this woman that contacted me. They've warned him. They've told him he's not there for that. But their claim is that, uh, is that if they don't have anything on video, uh, they can't do nothing. And the only thing I want to add here real quick, guys, before I get off, is that, is that it's interesting that not only is he a DJ, uh, he's at least in a security position, a bouncer position, in at least one of those jobs. And it shows you how even though he was stripped of his, you know, career, he ruined his career, he embarrassed his dad, who, by the way, his dad is a uh, former uh, Monroe County Sheriff's deputy, um, who, who did many, many years uh, on the force. Um, he, he, like I said, he's managed to work back into a security position. So this is a position of authority. Even though it's a strip club or whatever, it's still a position of some authority, some uh, safety issues. I sure. mean, they're in a security role. Right, right. I mean, itself is disturbing. Right, you know, it really kind of is. Wow. Well, thank you for this uh, the little tip, Davey. We appreciate it. Absolutely, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, the, the girl that fed you this story, I, I, you know her pretty well, Davey, or not? I've known her for years. She, like I said, she's she's a person that's always supported my work, always mm -hmm. followed my blogs. And uh, what's her uh, uh, any idea? I mean, what's her bra size if she's a dancer? What? What do you want? <laughs> Seriously, you are. Well, a I'll, be, I'll be honest. She's a very attractive woman, but she's also a very uh, a very committed woman. She uh, there she's you go. In a committed relationship, and she's not just some uh, skank on a pole. And that's the misconception people have when it comes to strippers. That there's skanks on a pole, not us. We have the utmost respect for strippers. I'm assuming there's a, there's a few. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Small Appreciate boobs. That. I mean, he didn't answer. You know what that means, Beck. <laughs> the larger the boob, the more money they make. Oh, yeah? I mean, not that's always. Gone. Maybe you're just really... What do you mean, not I always? I think 